There's the prize, the Anglo Celt perched on at St. Tiernox Park, Plinth, waiting for a welcoming pair of hands to swoop in and snatch it away. Will it be Michael Murphy to smuggle the silverware back to the shores of Donegal? Will it be Conor McManus to cozy up to the old cup? We're nearing journey's end. The trip has sometimes been bumpy, but always colourful. Let's pop pitch side at the man who knows all the gosses, Thomas Cain. TK, what's the chatter? Yes, well, we've just been confirmed of the team change within the last 30 seconds or so. One swap on the Donegal team. Mark McHugh is introduced in place of Martin O'Reilly. He, of course, has scored two goals in the last two games, so a player in form. But Mark McHugh giving the nod today. Two changes as well on the Monaghan team. Two of the half forwards not involved. Stephen Golligley will not start. Neither will Shane Kerry on the wing as well. They're replaced by Kieran Duffy and the experienced Owen Lennon comes in. Paddy, what's your reaction to those two changes? Yeah, well, I think uh, them changes were expected. We always knew that Malik Rourke wasn't going to name his, his, his certain 15 earlier in the week. And Owen Lennon's very experienced, and I expect them to go in there and pick up Neil Gallagher from the start. He mightn't have 70 minutes in him, but he's a nice matchup to Neil McGee and sorry Neil Gallagher and the fact is you've got Dick Lurkin on the bench yeah well he is one of the only players in the morning side who is capable physically of marking Neil Gallagher and that's why I thought he was going to be there from the start and as you said he probably hasn't got the 70 minutes in him and I expect Dick Lurkin to come on for a period maybe of 15 or 20 minutes to go here come Monaghan listen to that roar as Conor McManus leads his side out behind us both sides of course walking past the famous anglo Celt trophy we'll go back to Paddy once again look at those images Ulster final day here at St. Tiernix Park in Clonus. Fantastic buzz, great atmosphere all around the ground. Of course, a sellout crowd here today. Donegal already on the pitch. Anyway, teams that will be confirmed for you right this minute, Thomas, giving you the updates. So let's take a, a closer look. We now know that a second McHugh looks <laughs> looking at two together. And yeah, I think the way, the way Donegal will, will play is to get the, get the matchups right to be, be important. Who picks up Conor McManus? Will it be Paddy McGraw? Will it be Neil McGee? It has been Neil McGee up to now. You'd expect that if Kieran Hughes plays inside, Eamon McGee will pick him up. Then the half back lane will sit tight, and probably that's where someone at, at, at different times will go forward from there. Midfield, Neil Gallagher's battle. Owen Lennon has been picked. Owen got married on, on Friday and hope that's only celebrating he's going to have this weekend. But Mario Friday will be going in there and he'll go to the field. The matchups are so important in this between these two teams. Then up front, McFadden or McBrady will play inside in his own with Murphy roaming out the field and McFadden maybe playing off him inside in different times Neil Geller and McAhenny going inside. I'm well. sure you had spies at the wedding, Martin. Uh, not giving much away, Oshin. We now know the changes in Monaghan. Talk. Uh, Michael Murphy and that's an important tussle for them. I suppose Ryan Wiley will probably pick up McBrady and, and hope that he can match him physically. I think the key change from Monaghan today, uh, Mark, is Owen Lennon in, into the middle and he will play around the middle of the field and he will be on Neil Gallagher. One of the problems that, that, uh, that Monaghan have is not getting enough support for Conor McManus. And in q and Q's, they have the ideal foil for him. They just they haven't had the luxury of playing him in alongside him. They've played him out around the middle of the field. If they can play him closer to the goal today, it leaves the Conor McManus's job a lot yeah, easier. And it reflects Monaghan. the occasion. Absolutely, you know, and we've seen a helicopter coming in, and God knows who was on that. But, like, it is an occasion, and, you know, it, the only comparison I can make to an occasion in the Ulster final is the Munster Hurling final. And I've been lucky enough to be at a couple of those, and they're special occasions. And just like that today, a lot of people from down the country have very, very special occasion here in Clonus today. Martin, how's it going to go? Yeah, well, we go back to, to the match in Letter Kenny, they played in the league match. It ended up, what was it, 1 4 to 9 points. Both teams were very defensive, and only all were three points in the up at a stage, maybe after 20 minutes, and Monan hadn't scored at that stage. So it's going to be very, very defensive, and that's the way it's going to be played early on. The benches could have, could have a big burn, burn on it today as well. Now, Lee McLoon back for Donegal is a help, and you have Andy Thompson, the bench, Cumic fan. The Donegal bench is definitely getting stronger, but Monan have got a very, very strong bench, and Dick Clark in particularly, mm -hmm. and Stephen Gilogley has turned matches when, when they came into the game. So I think it could be down to just that making the difference. It's a very, very hard game to call. I think Monon are a better team than people are rating them. I rate the Monon team highly. I think this is a big year for them as a bunch of players. And, else. and if they can afford to do what we're saying, play Kieran Cues inside with a lot of physical strength out around that midfield area, I'd be fearful enough for Donegal today now, Mark. We will explore more See in a moment. The colour. It is uh, Sunday, July 19th. It is Ulster football final day and the sun has come out. So, Martin, you saw the boys talk through what the expectation is in terms of how the teams will actually line up and, and formation. Who do you expect to pick up Paddy McBrady? 
I would say they normally do, and by the fact of playing, playing Owen Lennon to go in directly in, that they're doing that on, on Neil Geller, they will put Colin Walsh back, cornerback. He's played in McBurdy and played him really well this last two years. Now, McBurdy's going really well a year and a year older, so I expect Colin Walsh to go back into the full, forward, full back lane. Vinnie Corey will definitely pick up Michael Murphy and follow him out the field. Oshin, uh, Paddy touched on Kieran Hughes there, expects him to play at the apex of, of attack, and we usually see him playing that deeper midfield role. Is he the man for that job? No, he's definitely the man for the job, Mark. A lot of, te a lot of teams throughout the country are searching for that top-class forward, that marquee forward. Monon have had him, but as I say, they haven't had the luxury of playing him a full forward. Uh, it all depends on how, how fit and how well Owen Lennon plays. If Owen Lennon, Owen Lennon is holding his own in the middle of the field, then they can afford to play a cues in, in the front of the square. And Philip, how key now is the duel between Vinnie Corey and Michael Murphy? I think it's massive. Everybody's seen how, how instrumental Michael Murphy is to this team. He is, even without playing well against Tyrone, he was still the leader. He kicked the three points from freeze, three crucial points. Against Armagh, he put on a complete masterclass. And the one thing that surprised me that day was that Kieran McGinney never man-marked him. And I've no doubt... Last year, Vinnie Corey ignored where the ball was, wasn't worried about it. Done basically with just McMahon done this year, and he followed Michael Murphy everywhere. And I expect to see the same this year. And was the question is, will Rory decide to put him inside for a bit and really test Vinnie? He's not an out-and-out fullback either, so I think that's that's probably the interesting question: what's going to happen if, if he's not a fight out the field? Will he be much pushed inside? No, so you touched on David Colrick uh, being a very good referee, but a very efficient referee. Could free taking be the difference today? Absolutely, I think uh, the statistic is 35% of the scores in David Goldrick's games comes from free kicks, so he does give soft enough free kicks, and I think you have to be on your metal. When I say soft free kicks, <laughs> from a dirty goal point of view, anything inside 60 yards, uh, Rory Began seems to be able to kick over the bar, and similarly, Michael Murphy and the other team, so anything inside 60 yards will be put down and they'll, ha and they'll be having a go at it. It's a different game, Mark. Different if you were game. managing Ireland, who would you rather have taken your free kicks, Brian Sheehan or, or Michael Murphy? Michael Murphy. Martin? Uh, I'd go with Brian Sheehan. I think Brian Sheehan's actually the best free taker, that one of the best I've ever at this point. Like, we look at free taking part now, there's a man beside us here, we'll not blow the head of him, but our man wouldn't have won all Ireland only for him on the free because Glenn probably won't It's Murphy's temperament, it's, though, that, that I like. Murphy's temperament. Yeah. Yeah. Sheehan, Sheehan, about. Murphy missed two against Derry that, that Sheehan would kick. You know, I just think Sheehan's the best free taker in the country at the minute. I really think he's, he's, he's fabulous. And well, he's making a big difference to Kerry in their picking. It's all about temperament. Murphy can be in the game or out of the game and still kick him. I think the big okay, thing about I've Murphy is unselfish. I mean, he, he, if he's been tightly marked, he'd pull out to the wing and stand out in the line to let another player do the job. I'm, I'm looking for yes, no's here. Will we see red, yellows and blacks today? Oshin? Absolutely. Yes. Martin? Yes, probably, yeah. yeah. And Philip? No reds, because David Colvick, that's one thing, might be fussy. He doesn't dish out cards too handle. You're just going for yellow and black. OK, Philip, I'll stick with you. Prediction time. I think I'm just edging towards Monaghan. I think they have the chance to peak towards this game, whereas Donegal have had a tough, tough road. But... It's one of those that's 50-50, but I think Monon may just edge it. Martin, I nearly don't need to ask, but go on. Yeah, I, listen, I'm, I'm fearful for Donegal today. I don't know why. I just think this Monon team, better. they're going in the right way. They're going in with the easy run into it. And I just, look, I hope it's a great game. But I just think that Monon, the quality of players they have, I'm, I'm tipping Monon that, that to, was a, to that one. Was a I hope I'm wrong, Martin. That was a great one word, Oshin. <laughs> Uh, the last time uh, Martin was worried there won't be nine points, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Donegal. I think they just have that extra little bit of quality and the extra little bit of quality on the bench. OK, your match commentary team is uh, Martin Clark of Enriacht and uh, Mara Feltz, Thomas Niblock. Mark and the Jensen studio, thank you very much indeed. And Clonus is such a difficult place to get to sometimes, particularly when the traffic is congested, which it is today. But there's just something special about hitting this Monaghan town in July and Ulster final day. Donegal know that journey so well. They've been here now five successive years. Monaghan have obviously been here for the past three years. And there's just a familiarity about Monaghan against Donegal. And no finer setting than the wonderful hollow turf of Clonus. So we're eagerly anticipating such a wonderful occasion. Martin Clark, you've never played championship football in Clonus. You have played here in league football for Down, but this really is what Gaelic football is all about. It is indeed, Thomas. Just walking down through the, the square this morning in Clonus and the, the streets were packed and I'm just seeing the, the stadium fill up here and the surface is unbelievable. I was out on it, had the pleasure of being out there. It was just magnificent and the occasion. I've been part of a few big ones in Australia as well, but this is just perfect today and I'm so excited for it. Well, the white and gold is certainly the predominant colours. There's a little bit of red and white and blue in there, obviously because of the minor game earlier, which Derry won. Congratulations to Derry. They are the Ulster champions of 2015. But the question now remains, who will be the senior champions? Donegal, they already have their hands on that anglo cell trophy. Will they have to hand it over today, or will they get an extra year's extension holding the famous piece of silverware?
So we're getting ready now for the anthem and it's going to be sung by Molly McKeever from Scottstown. When the scene is set, Molly McKeever was born in Derry and she now lives in Monaghan and it's a day for the sunglasses. The Donegal supporters expect, the Monaghan supporters, they expect also. There's the final team huddle, there's Conor McManus and there's a man that could have a very important role today, David Coldrick, the referee from County Meath. He's brandished 34 yellow cards already this season. We may see one or two of them today, of course, referee the 2007 and 2010. All-Ireland final. Handshakes all round, lots of pleasantries. In a moment or two's time, it's all going to come bust. And there's the goalkeeper for Donegal, Paul Durkin. Such a role he's had in 2015. Some wonderful saves. Splendid sunshine and a real sense of anticipation, Martin Clark. What are we expecting this afternoon? Just watching the players are going into their positions. Just for the minutes. It will be heavy hitting. and They're just ready to explode, as you said. When the ball is thrown in, the 2015 Ulster Championship final is underway and straight away it's messy in the middle of the field, but it's Monaghan who have won it. Kieran Hughes there gets a toe poke to it and Monaghan have ball in hand inside their own half and all of a sudden you can see Donegal filtering right back, congesting that defence. Here's Owen Lennon, one of the changes to this Monaghan side just before throwing. His pass is poured and it's intercepted by Christy Toy, the Donegal wing half forward. He's punched it inside. Neil Gallagher did very well to catch that ball. It was a little bit above him and there is... Mark McHugh, another one of the late changes in the Donegal setup. Colin McFadden, remember he's corner forward, but he's playing in around his own half in these initial stages of the Ulster football final. So, Donegal now exerting a little bit of patience in their build up. Carl Lacey, former footballer of the year, wearing centre half back, but loves to get forward and still moving forward. Carl Lacey wearing those white football boots, a distinct, distinct footballer, should I say. Lacey pulls it back to Neil McGee. McNeilish finds a man inside, and that's Eamon McGee. McGee still going. Nice ball inside, McBurdy with the left foot. One minute gone, and Paddy McBurdy has opened the scoring. But he scored a goal after one minute in Armagh, and he's done exactly the same today, except it's gone over the bar. Fantastic start for McBurdy and Donegal. It's a really patient move, and the thing McBurdy does so well is he, he on the turn, he can shoot. There's that misguided pass from Owen Lennon, and from giving away possession, on the attack, Donegal, the masters of this, turn around position, and it ends up over the bar in less than a minute. That's exactly what they, the way they want to play, and McBurdy had the ball in his hands for less than one second, just turned new with the post were impossible to defend that. So it's going to be a goal kick for Monaghan, Rory Began, the man to take it high and into the middle of the field, the players jump. Great catch from Owen Lennon. But the ball is spilled and Donegal win it, back again on their own 45 metre line. Neil Gallagher rarely gives possession away. And it's fine, Colin McFadden. Nice ball inside towards Paddy McBrady, who's two defenders for company. He gets out in front of both of them. And all of a sudden, the ball's hit out this right-hand side. Carl Lacey, he switched wings. Outside of the boot, over the bar. Donegal lead by two, with two minutes gone. And it's all going to strip for the defending Ulster champions. Yeah, we see the players now, a lot of them wear the GPSs in their jerseys to see how far they, they run during the game. Carl Lacey is one of the best athletes in Ireland. We've seen him set up that last score there about one minute ago, then he's charging up the far wing, and the execution there on the outside of the right foot was absolutely class. Two shots for Donegal, two points scored. They lead two points to no score, and the goal kick misjudged by Vinnie Corey, and it trickles out for a sideline ball. 
Monaghan look a little bit nervous. They've had a couple of mistakes. Now, they'll need something or someone to help settle the team because Donegal get a start on you. You don't want to go two, three, four points behind too early. Well, this is wonderful play for Donegal. Gallagher trying to bulldoze his way through. He's lost out possession. But already with three minutes gone, Carl Lacey has had possession and they had three attacks on three different occasions. He really seems to be the go-to man from the Donegal perspective. Now, how can Monaghan respond? He's now with corner forward Dermot Malone. The Castle Blaney club man crosses the 45-metre line, tries to give it inside, does so, and finds his man and finds him well. Owen Duffy drawing the foul, and it's going to be a free in for Monaghan. Not the easiest one for a free taker to start off with. Definitely not the easiest free. Uh, probably was there. Um, Goldrick, he, he, he gave it. It was a bit, bit over eager in the tackle there. But Conor McManus gets this. He'd be really, really, really wanting to score this because, you know, he's been really tightly marked. I've been watching him off the ball. And, and then he take a Donegal defender run past him. They're giving him a little shoulder. They're trying to get the energy out of him. But this will really boost him if he gets it over. But it's a good start for Owen Duffy. Always good for a forward to get out in front of his man and win that initial ball. So he's beat Paddy McGrann that initial play here comes Conor McManus with the free right footed how dare we doubt him a wonderful craftsman at his trade and he's brought Monaghan right back their first score come after five minutes Donegal lead by a single score perfect execution didn't try to hit it or over kick the ball just a lovely stroke over the bar and he knows this ground well and he always plays well here so perfect start for him and McBurty at the other end also well there's Malachi O'Rourke and just to illustrate how far ahead he was of his time he was playing for St. Mary's University College. Peter Canavan came up and was playing, and he told Peter Canavan, you're going to be marking this guy. He was slabbering about you one night and a night out. Peter Canavan, the game of his life, reminded the man about it. Malachi Rowe told him, the week after, I was only telling fibs. That was way back in the late 80s. Way ahead of his time. Here come Donegal on the attack. The Gallagher does well. The Gallagher's gone for the shot. It's Colin McFadden, in fact. And it's all gone loose. Chance of a score. Hit left footed over the bar. And none other than that man, Frank McGlynn, who's tucked it over the bar. Such importance placed on his shoulders from a Donegal perspective. Yep, similar to Lacey coming up from the back. I think it was an over ambitious shot from Colin McFadden, but he made something out of nothing. Um, a sensible option. The goal was on, but he made his decision really quickly. And it was interesting, as soon as the ball went over the bar, Donegal charged down the field to man up so Monaghan couldn't get the short kick out or at least make it a bit more difficult. So that could be a tactic for them to squeeze up on Donegal um, when they're defending kick outs. Here comes Desi Moan. I think it's the first time Desi has touched the ball in the opening six minutes here in the Ulster Football Final. Live on BBC Television. Remember, you can contact any of our studio guests through Twitter at BBC Championship and use the hashtag BBC GAA. Do send us your thoughts and contributions towards the programme. Monaghan, very good at patient build-up. It wasn't on, they elected to go backwards, and all of a sudden it's with cornerback Ryan Wiley. Wiley still going, loves to get forward. This is great play from Wiley, takes a bounce, tries to give it to Neil McAdam, block down. And nothing quite like a block to galvanise the trips. Donegal come away with it, and here comes that man again, Carl Lacey. Lacey goes a dummy one way and goes the other, taking on his man. Lacey bombing forward, he's looking for options, he's found one. Paddy McBrerty. Has found Christy Toy. Has given it to McElhenney. McElhenney hit with the shoulder. Stops him in his tracks. The ball is lost. And Monaghan turn it over. The counter-attack starts. That will please Malachi O'Rourke and the Monaghan supporters here in Clonus. Coming forward again is corner forward Dermot Malone. Playing that sweeper rule. A possession given away. Donegal on the attack. Frank McGlynn, he's already got a point today, made his debut way back in 2006. Neil Gallagher, lovely lazy style from the Glenswilly club man. Neil McGee, there's not too many fullbacks in the country you see taking on their men with left and right foot. McBrerty thought about going one way, instead goes the other, drops it, picks it up, goes for the shot. A little bit too much curl on it, a little bit ambitious, and that's Donegal's first wide, but he still lead three points to one. Yeah, Paddy McBurty's a really exciting player. He's, he's probably the most exciting player in Ulster at the minute. He just has that cozy his youth on, on his side. He tries things other players, you know, would, wouldn't. And even when he fell there, he got up and he got a shot away. And it was a desperate diving block attempt from Carlo Connell that, that put him off ultimately in the end. Well, that was a great block. We've just seen flash up on the television screen of Christy Toy rolling back the years. Monhin have possession and they're coming forward. Owen Lennon gives it to Desi Moen. 
Moen takes a bounce, goes again, goes for the shot from distance. This is ambitious, a little too ambitious. It goes to the left and it goes wide. Um, interesting there, when, when Desi Moen came up the field, there was nobody inside the 40 metres from the pass at this, so the shot was his only option. It was a very difficult one from there, even though it was a central position. It was very far out, but you know, it just goes to show you his mindset. He'll not be you know, defending. I know he's backing Colin McFadden there as play before the kick out, but he will be bombing forward. Another fantastic athlete, as well as a good footballer. There's Malik Yorg. Penny for his thoughts. Ball kicked out high into the middle of the field. Neil Gallagher goes for it. It's broken down and goes into the hands of Kieran Hughes. Decides to the backwards. So Donegal have all their players except Paddy McGrady inside their own half. And right now they have all of those players inside their own 45 metre line. But Manon come forward through Carl O'Connell and Carl O'Connell gets his point. Well, they had a rehearsed move of Carl O'Connell against Fermanagh during the throw-in for the semi-final against Fermanagh. He bombed forward the minute the ball was thrown in, took the pass, got a point off the initial pass in that game. He loves to get forward. He has been free on a couple of occasions. Uh, hasn't been spotted by his teammates as well. So I think it would be wise for Rory Gallagher and Donegal selectors to pay Carl O'Connell a bit more respect because he's been one of the highlights of the championship so far. And that was a fantastic point to settle his side. A great score and just a point between the sides. Ball kicked out high. And into the middle of the field, Neil Gallagher goes up. It's just a little too high for the Gonsvilli man to pluck it out of the crowd. Desi Moen has it and switches the play to the man that's just scored a point a few moments ago, Carl O'Connell. So it's now with cornerback Ryan Wiley. O'Connell takes the return pass. He's all of a sudden find a little bit of space, not tempted by it, and switches the play. That's good play for Malone to find the opposite wing, Vinnie Corey. Finds Fintan Kelly. Kelly again the legs to go backwards into the safe hands of Owen Lennon. O'Connell spots the pass. The shot blocked down again for Donegal. And again they turn it over. That's twice Monon have been blocked inside the Donegal half. And this is where the Chirconnell men are very effective. The counter-attack when they have numbers. Moving forward, Martin McElhenney still going. McElhenney gives it off to Paddy McBrady, takes a toe tap, goes again, finds McElhenney and finds Colin McFadden inside, but the pass was this. And coming away with it is Kieran Duffy. The margins are very tight, particularly on a final day. So Carl O'Connell picks it up inside the Donegal half at the second time of asking. Plays it back. So Donegal again filter everybody right back. All their players except Colin McFadden this time are inside their own half. Space is at a premium. That was a high challenge from Frank McGlynn. And it's going to be a free in. And Vinnie Curry did well through the foul. He did, and he, he kind of stumbled. He was on his way down, which made the foul for Frank again look a little worse than it actually was. Um, we often see them sort of freeze when you're trying to go past someone, you lose your feet and feet slightly and then the, the tackle's always going to be high because you know you're you're looking to tackle someone when they're upright if they're down that bit lower it's, it's a great free to win and you know, we expect it manus but there's a, a yellow card i think that's a little harsh so he'd be on eggshells for a, for a while frank mcglynn so frank mcglynn is booked and he will pick up that yellow card and that will perhaps concern rory gallagher one might say well played benny curry so it's going to be a free for Monaghan. It's going to be taken way out in that right-hand side. Curling in, and it goes to the left, and it goes wide. Difficult one for Conor McManus, elected to hit that one off the ground. It's rare that he misses. He is human after all. So a subdued atmosphere. Some of the supporters not quite sure what to make of it all. They've spotted the camera. Hello. Donegal three points, Monaghan two. What have you made of the opening 12 minutes, Martin? Carr? Yeah, we've got what we've probably expected to get. You know, both teams filling their defences and and charging forward when they can. Plenty of turnovers, really robust tackling, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to take quite a while to settle this game. And you know, we're probably looking at the full 70 minutes before we know who's going to win it. Well, Monaghan have hit four shots. They've only scored one from play. 
so they're a little bit loose up front. Here's Ryan McHugh, such an influential player. He's played all the games for Donegal in the Championship and the league in 2015. Illustrates just how important he is. So too is this man, Colin McFadden. Seems back to his old self in 2015. Tries to get rid of the ball, and just as he does so under so much pressure, is a judge to have overcarried. Shows how ferocious it is in that fullback line. You could see the Monaghan um, defenders pumping their fists when they got that turnover. It shows you what they've been working on in training. If you're going to tackle, tackle hard, tackle fair. And they celebrated that as if it was a point. It was a massive win and now they're on the attack. Vinnie Corey getting forward. And it's quite interesting to note that with almost a quarter of an hour gone, we've hardly mentioned Michael Murphy. So the Monaghan attack in that perspective is working, it may work even better now, Malone through a goal, goes to the shot, great save from Durkin, picks up the ball but he picked it off the ground, it's going to be a free in for Monaghan but it could have been a goal, here we see it again, Very. lovely pass and all of a sudden Donegal exposed, there's Malone, tries to play under the keeper and Paul Durkin did ever so well, that All-Ireland final in 2014 may come back to haunt him but again, not for the first time in the championship, does well, spreads himself gets down though and makes the save. It's a very intelligent pass over the top, took out three Donegal defenders and I thought he was going to soccer it, thought he was just going to not take it into his hands, just try and flick it over Durkin because Durkin can smother the ball so well. It was a great save and he, but he was all lucky the goalkeeper to touch it on the ground but it's better to concede one point in three and he, he really bailed his team out there. Well the 30 year old playing for the Ballyboden St Enders club Paul Durkin a wonderful goalkeeper and illustrated just how good was there except he picked the ball off the ground. He wasn't inside the six-yard box. That's given away a free. And this is very easy for a player of the caliber of Conor McManus. So, with a quarter of an hour gone, it's three points apiece. It is, and it was just the way that Donegal defence was opened up. It was the timing of the pass through um, that set Malone off there. And just when they try and surround you, if you can just flick that ball out somehow, there is players in space. There's going to be players in space to move onto the ball. And it was the timing of that pass that created the goal chance. And Monaghan will be looking to do that more and more because Donegal don't give away too many goal opportunities, let alone goals. Carl Lacey coming forward for Donegal. And still moving forward. So comfortable in possession, Carl Lacey. McNeilish again has been relatively quiet in the opening quarter of an hour. Spreads the play, however gifted footballer really is the playmaker in this Donegal team this is good play for Michael Henney just a little bit of space and he really puts the head down and goes it worked to great effect against Tyrone he scored 1-2 that day and was many people's man of the match but it didn't have the end product required and Monaghan come away with it they're into enemy territory pass the ball back there's Carl O'Connell switches the play Lennon plays in Desi Moan Moen from a long way out, ambitious, and that's two kicks from Desi Moen and two wides. Yeah, it was very ambitious that one, a bit silly, you know, Monaghan had turned the ball over with a nice block and they were building a, another chain of possessions, but I think it was a rush of blood to the head from Desi Moen, he, he should know better, an experienced player. Well, there's Michael Henney that attempted block, it certainly put enough pressure that the kick was spoiled, Monaghan came up the field, but Desi Moen failed to convert. Three points apiece, 17 minutes gone. The Clintibberth man won't be happy with that. He has good feet. Great play from Paddy McGrath. Looked odds on not to win that ball. Did enough to break it, pick up the pieces and set up another Donegal attack. Here comes Ryan McHugh. Michael Murphy has possession. I think that's the first time I've said that. Frank McGlynn wearing those red distinctive gloves. Michael Murphy switches the play to his Glen Swilly club teammate, his Donegal teammate, Neil Gallagher. Gallagher still going, thought about the shot just a moment, gave it to Colin McFadden from a long way out on the left foot. Does it go over? It doesn't. Goes to the right and it goes wide. Second Donegal wide, and it was a long way out. And Rory Gallagher takes a little bit of water and he looks as worried as Rory Gallagher has ever really looked which is not too worried <laughs> hat and sunglasses very much the diet of the day Carl O'Connell and once again you see Tony Gall well I mentioned it 14 players in their own half they now have all 15 inside their own half 
only one of those is between the 45 and the 65. Very difficult to play against such stringent conditions, and that's why they pack out the defence, they smother the attack, and they snap up the ball and build from the back. Here come Donegal, Paddy McBrerty. He's a long way from goal, however. Ryan McHugh takes on his man, does ever so well. Christy Toy thought about the pass, smartly passed it backwards. It would have been blocked had he gone forwards. However, he's smothered by three Monaghan players. And anything Donegal can do, Monaghan can do likewise. Both teams are losing the ball just as they get into that scoring zone. When you maybe lift your head to have a look at the post, and that's when the defence just comes in and hits you hard and gets that ball back. So I'd like to see a bit more incisive passing, a bit more movement inside, or even try a couple of long balls um, for Donny Gall's case into McFadden or Murphy and into McManus to give him a chance. Just cut out all the hand pass and that, go for a couple of long balls because defences are very much on top at the minute. And so is the programmes for today's match. A little bit of reading and a little bit of protection from the sun. He predicted rain today. It may still yet come. Donegal on the attack. Carl Lacey finds Frank McGlynn. There's a Monaghan player down. Flat out on the turf of Clonus. Off screen will follow the play, however. Donegal on the attack. There goes the kick off the post. Nobody at home for Donegal. And Monaghan breathe and survive. Ryan McHugh, the man with the shot. So Monaghan on the counter-attack, but the referee has stopped play. And it's Conor McManus this time and is receiving some treatment. He is afraid that it was a head injury, so the referee had to stop play. So Conor McManus lying on the ground. Malachi O'Rourke is not impressed. He's certainly seen something that has made him angry. So it's all gone a little bit quiet. We await the treatment of Conor McManus. Some one and supporters can't bear to look. So the linesman chatting to the referee, David Coldrick. What did he see? And... Darren Hughes and Frank McGlynn getting to know one another. Hello. So, what will happen? There's Neil McGee and there's Kieran Duffy. And Conor McManus is not yet on his feet. He is on his knees, however. Here's Conor McManus, Michael Murphy. Well, it's a third man tackle. And by the letter of the law, you could say that's a black card. However, it was a congested space, shall we say, and perhaps we've been very harsh. Be interesting to look at that one again. The Monaghan mascots are out. There's the hashtag BBC GAA. Was that a black card for Michael Murphy? Well, an angle, you could argue, but it was. So Monaghan have possession after that break and play. It's three points apiece with 21 minutes gone. Owen Lennon and from the terrific atmosphere after that injury the crowd has just gone a little bit quiet here comes Dermot Malone maybe the supporters will find their voice now tries to play in that's a good play finds Fintan Kelly he'll be well used to this pitch he's a clueless club man Lennon who's seen a lot of the ball Neil McAdam switches wings here comes Vinnie Corey And as you would expect, Donegal are 14 players behind the ball. Well, Jim McGuinness said during the week that Monaghan were playing 15 players against 20 to try and replicate those crowded defence. So, if that is true, well, then they'll be used to this. In comes the shot, it drops short. And that's classic Donegal play. They just frustrate you so much. Yes, exactly. They, they force Monaghan into that mistake rather than just over by perceived pressure really no one was really even tackling and it was a bad choice of shot should have been played in slightly closer to the goal and here's Donegal all streaming forward again it's, the key is not to lose that possession by dropping it in the keeper's hands Christy Toy the fans say he perhaps overcarried the referee said no Donegal maintained possession this is good play Michael Henney dragged down the referee says legally so Monaghan come away with it on the counter-attack, nobody up front. There was not one Monaghan player inside the Donegal half when Monaghan broke forward. So they had no option but to come back. Such a hard way to play physically as well. He's sprinting up and down the pitch. See guys with their hands on their knees already. 
and out in that heat, you know, you, you have to be so fit. That's why guys are training five, six night, nights a week. It's because of this. Guys are running huge, covering massive ground, particularly those half-back, half-forward positions. And, you know, that's why there's been a slight couple of lulls in the game. People are exhausted already. Carl O'Connell has found Desi Moen. Tries to give it inside back to O'Connell. O'Connell is down on the ground. You don't want to be smothered by three Donegal players. And one of them is Michael Murphy. He seems to be operating a much deeper role in the opening half here. That's at Tiernick's Park in Clonus. McNeilish finds McHugh, who in turn finds Neil Gallagher. So a laboured build-up. No panic. Here comes Frank McGlynn. What can he do? Nobody up front except Paddy McRerty on his own. McFadden switches the play to Neil Gallagher. Gallagher still going, taking on Kieran Duffy. Nobody at home decides to go backwards and eventually finds Martin McElhenney. Now, what can Donegal conjure up? Or can Monan stay, stay disciplined in defence? Here comes Neil McGee. McGee still going. McGee, the fullback, remember, this is great play from the fullback, goes for the shot under pressure. Never looked entirely comfortable heading it. Although, to be fair, he does have good feet. It does go to the left and it goes wide. The scores remain level. Maliki O'Rourke will be thinking plenty. Donegal three wides, Monaghan three wides, Donegal three points, Monaghan three points, 25 minutes gone. They suggested before throw in that it was going to be tight, and that's the way the opening 25 minutes or so has. And as well as, well as the three wides, each time there's been a series of turnovers in that scoring zone. Because it's so packed, because the defending's been very disciplined, and David Kolderk is letting the game go, so, you know, it, they are getting into the scoring positions, but that's when the defenders have been turning the ball over, which is, in itself is how both teams would really, you can see them celebrating those turnovers because they've been practicing so hard at them, and it's, it's going to be who can tip the ball over the bar from f further out the field is going to have a crucial bearing in this game. This is great play from Desi Moen. He loves to get forward, so comfortable off either foot but just at the very last second was bottled up and the play goes backwards. But Donegal have everybody back. Monaghan, from their perspective, just key to maintain possession. Here comes Darren Hughes, tries to play in Vinnie Corey. Corey fist pass it out. Owen Duffy, forced to go backwards. All the way backwards to cornerback Ryan Wiley. This is modern day Gaelic football. Neil McAdam. Plays a 1-2. And it goes backwards. Who will crack first? Well, all of a sudden, Monon to find a little bit of space. Owen Duffy has found it. What a pass that was to Owen Duffy. And supporters, commentary teams may I maybe add, get frustrated watching that type of play but somebody will crack it's either the attacker or the defense that was patience from Monaghan they picked out Owen Duffy to perfection that's a wonderful score fantastic and that, that was just having the vision not just wanting to pass it off as soon as you get it do your own that way he looked up 40 meters took out seven or eight Donegal defenders and it was a classy finish because they were converging on him very quickly in the end so Monaghan probably do deserve this lead well that's the first time Monaghan have led in this Ulster final, they lead by a single score. Rory Gallagher will not be impressed the fact that Owen Duffy was left unmarked. The Latin man did well to finish the move. There goes the high ball in, into the square. Of course, Michael Murphy, who's in at full forward now, smothered out of it, and Monaghan come away with it. Now, all of a sudden, Monaghan have the bit between the teeth. You feel they're growing in confidence with 10 minutes left. And off the ball, we have two players down on the ground. A little bit of wrestling going on between Neil McGee and Conor McManus. We'll follow the play. The players are back on their feet. In comes this shot. Not great from Owen Duffy. Didn't quite work out. And there is the Ryder Cup captain, Paul McGinley. And there's his father beside him. He also played for Donegal back in the day. So we just mentioned off camera that two players were wrestling off the ground. It was Conor McManus and Neil McGee. Both of them <laughs> were tangled with each other. And the referee is going to have to deal with this. Is it going to be a yellow card? 
and he's taking their names into the book. And this would be a worry for Rory Gallagher and Donegal if Neil McGee picks up a yellow card so early in the game, particularly when marking a player like Conor McManus. We have to see if that's the case. It is. He gives both of them a yellow card. Yeah, but David Goldrick obviously didn't see a free kick there, so because he didn't, you know, give a free either way. So he goes over him just because he's seeing the two guys, you know, wrestling on the ground. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go over and book them. I think I'd like to see that just be be left. There's nothing malicious, and I watched the whole. Um, Kind of couple of seconds they were resting and certainly not on there for a book and i think referees are sometimes too quick to pull the, the yellow card out there well nine shots each from play donegal scored three monaghan have scored two of course the other point coming from a free and that shot goes to the left and wide and there's somebody perhaps listening to bbc radio ulster they also have live coverage of today's game online on television and on BBC Radio also the BBC have a covered this afternoon. Ball kicked out high into the middle of the field, carried out over the sideline by Mark McHugh. Throws the ball away in frustration. And straight back into position. And that's the thing you notice about Donegal. They don't even look where the ball is at once possession is given away. Head down, sprint back into possession. Into it's position, should I say. It's the ultimate in discipline. You're not watching what happened, not getting carried away with the last play. It's all about focusing on what, where they are in the system, what their role is within it. And Donegal do it best. So Monaghan on the attack. Owen Lennon with a big fist pass. Picked out his man very well indeed. Here comes the switch of the play. Great catch that time by Kieran Duffy. Duffy with the shot. Duffy with the point. Well, that was fantastic. It really was carbon copy of Owen Duffy's point just a moment ago, except the pass wasn't just as good. Kieran Duffy had an awful lot to do to win this. Picks it out well in front of his man, takes the dummy, gets it on the left foot. That is a superb score. Superb. I actually think it was a better pass, Thomas. He had to really drill it in quick, or else the Donegal defence could have could have got across. So you really just have to get your head over and back yourself in to make that pass. And it was a lovely finish, dummy and finish. And you don't often see Donegal give up, give up those sort of scores, so Monaghan can take great confidence from it. Neil McGee plays it forward, intercepted by Darren Hughes. Great play from the Monaghan man. He's barging his way up that sideline, gives it inside. Monaghan on the attack. They're definitely finishing the half much stronger than Donegal. They lead by two points, five minutes to go until the break. Here comes Dermot Malone. He's seen an awful lot of possession during the opening half. Desi Moen, and if nothing's on up front, he's no problem in pulling it back. That's four Monaghan scores in a row. And Donegal, unbelievably perhaps, haven't scored in 25 minutes. In comes the shot outside of the boot. Not accurate enough. And Christy Toy back there defending. He's under pressure, however, and he's lost it. That's great play from cornerback Ryan Wiley. Putting severe pressure on Toy. Toy struggling to get away. Just tries to throw the ball away. Monaghan pick it up. Now, chance of a counter-attack. If this goes over, Cronus will erupt. Superb score. There's the fist pump. And if you didn't hear the Monaghan supporters before that, you certainly hear them now. That's the third score for McManus. Absolutely fantastic score from a Monaghan point of view. To turn Christy Toy over there to make him just hand pass it away in panic almost two men around him and then for your star man to show such courageous play to run past two Donegal defenders and rifle it over Paul Durkin's crossbar and you can just see and feel what that has done to Clonus. Monaghan really starting to believe now that this can be, this is theirs. Five points in a row for Monaghan. They lead by three points. Three minutes to go until half time. Donegal certainly could do with a score before half time and it's going to be a free and to be fair to Monon, to illustrate how disciplined their tackling has been, we're into the 32nd minute, and this is the first free Donegal have had in a scoreable position. Kieran Hughes, I have a feeling, is going into the notebook of the referee, and it's going to be another yellow card. So the fourth yellow card this afternoon, and it goes the way of Kieran Hughes. Here we have a look at it again. In comes the tackle. Was slightly high. Yes, just a mistimed one. Probably again harsh for the yellow card. He was going for the ball and, and McGlynn did turn his body well. So there's a few boys there on the yellow cards at this stage which 
can have a bearing, but both, seat, both sides have strong bench as well. So Michael Murphy, as I said, that the, was down there on the surface is perfect. So you'd expect Michael to put this one over. In comes the free, and it goes over the bar. Michael Murphy reduces the deficit to two points. It's his first point today. The Donegal supporters like it, so too does Michael Murphy. Three minutes until the break. He actually, Paddy McBurdy, he was looking at it with his left foot, and, and big Michael Murphy says, I have this one covered, and you can see why. Masterful stroke. Christy Toy has been taken off. That is the price you pay when you're caught in possession. So coming on, replacing him was Martin O'Reilly, who was due to start, but was taken off before the starting lineup, if you could say that, for Mark McHugh. A good player to bring in, Martin O'Reilly. Monaghan on the attack, centre half back. Vinton Kelly, and there is the substitute. That is Martin Riley, who's played more for Donegal in 2015 than any other player. So he's certainly a vital cog in this Donegal machine. Desi Moen, across the 45, goes for his third shot, third time lucky. Third time lucky indeed. Great score from the Contender Club man. Again, you talk about Desi Moen's, uh, you know, the strength of his, he is mentally. Missed two shots, got ironic cheers from the crowd, didn't put him off, lifted his team came forward and that's the most difficult of them all to get the the power in your shot to lean back the outside of the boot not too many players can get that and a, a lot of players would have passed it off after missing two chances and i myself said you know he probably shouldn't have had the second shot but you know he's very mentally strong and, and that was a massive score great score from desi moan he said his childhood hero was tom brady who plays for the new england patriots what brady is showing character and nerves of steel and so too did desi moan on that occasion Missed two free, two shots earlier on. He did very well to hit that one outside of the boot. Beautiful score. Well, Monaghan definitely have their tails up. They're up for this fight. They're moving forward. Desi Moen takes the dive, gets back on his feet. Now, can Monaghan switch the play? They have numbers that they can spot it. Instead, they're going down this narrow side, but it's punched back. And Monaghan are just happy to maintain possession. They lead by three points. There will be one additional minute played at the end of this first half. We've already played 15 seconds of that. Well, it was almost lost. Good tackling from Colin McFadden. Oh, this is wonderful play. Really is from Conor McManus, but just at the last minute, well, there's committed play. Two players really going for the ball. Fintan Kelly wins it. Shot again from an accurate angle. And it goes to the left and it goes wide. Monaghan finishing very impressively, Martin Clark. Very impressive. And, and the way they, they were able to get that shot away was a quick free kick. Um, we watched it last night with Colin Cooper set up the carry, the carry goal against Cork. Just players who are switched on mentally all the time. When other players switch off when the free kick's given, move it on quickly and often there is space there. So Donegal on the attack. They would love a score just before half time. They trail by three. We've already played the minute of additional time at the end of this first half. And Michael Murphy has just kicked the ball away under no pressure whatsoever. This is uncharacteristic Donegal. And Monon had the chance to get another score before the half. Conor McManus, four for him today. And that perhaps the best of the lot. Fantastic. Again, Michael Murphy kicked the ball away. I actually see him hang his head once McManus put that over. He realises that could have potentially been a two-point swing, but McManus is really, really getting away from Donegal at the minute, and Monaghan just put in a superb set, um, performance there in that first half. But there goes the half-time missile, and there's no question about it. Conor McManus and those supporters wearing the blue and white will be the happier of that opening 35 minutes. Desi Moen hit two points, two shots, should I say, that failed to result in a point. He had the courage to go for a third, and definitely, mentally, Monaghan have it. Seems to be, you can just feel it around the crowd, around the stadium, but we can't write Donegal off. They are the, the masters of never giving up, never giving in. They're so fit, and you know, we really have a game on, but Monaghan have got their tactics perfect, and their, their players are just playing better than Donegal's, and that's how simple it is at this stage. A wonderful play for Monaghan. They allow Donegal to go in first. And Rory Gallagher 
will have much to do at half time, Martin Clark. Definitely haven't found themselves in this position very often in recent years, so they'll have to dig really, really deep. And, um, you know, as Monaghan are certainly with all the momentum, half time probably came at the wrong time for them, but they'll be looking forward to the second half. McGinley and Thomas Keane, and the gents in the studio, three minutes ahead of Monaghan. Connor McManus, Neil McGee, what will the second 35 minutes provide for those two and those supporters? Wonderful setting that is the Sun Kiss Clonus. We're ready for the second 35. Donegal have it all to do. They trail by four, and Monaghan have won the ball from the throw in straight away, eager to get on with things. And here comes Kieran Duffy, who scored a wonderful point in the opening half here in this 2015 Ulster final. Here comes Dermot Malone. Malone still going, thought about going right, wasn't on, tried to go back and lose his possession. However, with Darren Hughes, he started that run behind Colin McFadden and nips in in front of him. Hughes still going. Taken out after the pass. The referee says no free. Neil Gallagher finds Frank McGlynn. Meanwhile, Darren Hughes lies motionless on the ground. He's receiving some treatment. We'll follow the play because Donegal are on the attack. Championship football is hard stuff. Neil Gallagher finds McNeilish. McNeilish from behind the 45 meter line. Her shot poorly executed. But McNeilish back on his feet. So, Darren Hughes is back on his feet. Let's have a look at that again. There's Darren Hughes, passes it out, taken out of it after the pass by Michael Murphy. That's the second time that's happened, once each in each half. Martin Clark, what did you make of that? I think that one wasn't as obvious. It was just he mistimed it when he released the ball and his momentum was taken more than cynical. It was late more than cynical, but you're going to feel it if Michael Murphy's powering in at you. And Darren Hughes is a very, very big athlete himself. So thankfully, surely it was at least a free. He definitely a free kick. Donegal on the attack. Frank McGlynn bombing forward crosses the 45 and he finds Martin McElhenney who lets fly with the right foot. And it goes too far to the right and wide. So two wides for Donegal in the opening two minutes. They've started the better in the opening minutes of the second half, but it's that man, Maliki O'Rourke, and his Monaghan side that currently hold all the aces. He still looks a worried man. It's going to be right until that final whistle. Ball kicked out. Nobody at home. Ryan McHugh picks up the pieces for Donegal. Here comes Donegal. Colin McFadden with the shot. Third shot during the second half and the third wide. Well, that's Donegal's seventh wide in total during this match, and three of them have come in the opening three minutes. Strange one. Definitely, Monaghan have given up as many shots there in the first couple of minutes of the second half as they did probably for the last 25 in the in the first half. So. Donegal are be disappointed that they haven't registered at least some scoreboard pressure there on Monaghan. Monaghan, I feel as if they've gotten away with a, 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 a lacklustre start in their behalf to the start of the second half. Carl O'Connell moving forward. He's got pace to burn. O'Connell drifts back and passes it back. Here comes Vinnie Corey, who switches the play. Neil McAdam right on the halfway line. So it's all gone a little bit flat. Dermot Malone tries to play in. Owen Lennon. And Lennon's gone for the shot, and Lennon's got the point. Well, wonderful score. Even the Derry men are applauding that one. Absolutely sublime from Owen Lennon. Well, he's given such wonderful service to those supporters in that Monaghan team. But what a point that was for a man, perhaps, wouldn't be noted for his accurate shooting. That is a wonderful score. And it's just an illustration that things are going right for Monaghan at the minute. Uh, Donegal would have been happy enough with Owen Lennon, not a renowned scorer, way out on that right wing on his right foot, but he was able to put it over, and it's, it's a big, big score. Here comes Ryan McHugh, this is danger for Monaghan. McHugh still going, surely dragged back from behind, the referee gives a free in. Now, was that cynical? Because it certainly looked as if he was tugged from behind. Rory Gallagher rubbing the hands, ready for championship battle. Anthony Thompson getting ready to enter the fray. No question that he will be introduced very shortly. Here's that run again. Ryan McHugh moving forward. Darren Hughes giving chase. Tackle from behind. He slips. It definitely is a free. Probably nothing else. Great leadership by McHugh. He, he looked up. He saw the gap and he sprinted towards it. And Darren Hughes was trying his best to get back at him. But definitely a free. And that's the energy Donegal need to bring. They need to start running through the defence and, and seeking to win some frees. 
It may have cost Monaghan a point, but the other option was letting him run through and perhaps finding the back of the net. So Monaghan will perhaps take that. And for all the huff and puff Donegal provided in the opening five minutes of the second half, Monaghan were the team to score first. Donegal got one afterwards. The margin remains at four points as the substitution is made. On come Anthony Thompson coming off. This is a big blow for Donegal because Carl Lacey will play no further part in the 2015 final. Now I'm watching Carl Lacey to see if he's injured or if he's limping. He certainly had an electric start to this final. He doesn't look particularly injured, I have to say. Yeah. That's not to say that he isn't, but that's a bad sign yeah, from a Donegal perspective. It's not really a like-for-like -like swap. Anthony Thompson's more of a lockdown, defensive, dire defender. He can get forward too, but... He's not as dynamic as, as Carl Lacey is going forward, bringing others into the game and, and taking his own scores. Uh, he, he's, he's one of the best attacking defenders in Ireland, if you like, but hopefully it's not an injury, but it looks like it is. Oh, that's great play from Mark McHugh. Did ever so well. Dummy Colin Mudge twice in one move. Moved forward, drew the foul, and a very scorable position for Donegal. That's wonderful play from the Kilcarman. Let's have a look at it again. Very intelligent. He did the exact same thing a couple of minutes prior. Won his free. He's, he did it again. Just knowing where the game's at, knowing how to get your team game, your team back into contention, and and that is running at the defence because no one likes being behind when you're as a defender. If you're attacking from behind, nine times out of ten it's a free kick, and McBurdy doesn't miss these. Five points to nine. Monaghan lead by four. A free just outside the D from number 13, Paddy McBrearty. It suits the left footer, which he predominantly kicks off. Hits it, Donegal need this. It's a pressure kick, but it converts easily. The deficit is reduced, the ripple of applause from the Donegal supporters, and now just a kick of a ball between the sides. It'd be interesting to see if Donegal do adapt that more running style instead of passing um, across where Monaghan had their defensive wall up. Will they start taking more risk and sprinting at them, trying to win free kicks and breaking through the line? Darren Hughes picks up the ball, evades the tackle, stays in play. No, the linesman said he wasn't across the line. It's going to be a Donegal ball. Donegal have possession. Colin McFadden gives it to the man running on. That's Michael Murphy. Murphy thought about this shot. Great tap tackle that time from Finton Kelly. It was off his feet, had to be accurate with the hand and just made the connection with the ball. And the ball has been turned over. Lennon did well with that fist pass also. He had to play it low, otherwise it would have been blocked. Vinny Corey trying to play in. Surely Connor McManus's jersey is tugged. It is. Referee spotted it, and it's going to be a free in for Monaghan. Neil McGee leads his innocence. And the replay will illustrate that it perhaps was holding his jersey. So Connor McManus will take this free. Very difficult free. Let's have a look at it. Yes, absolutely. A free kick. Um... Sometimes the referee can miss that with, with the angle he's at. But again, this Monaghan scoring opportunity has came from Michael Murphy turning the ball over. Great tackle from Finton Kelly. Did ever so well to get the hand in. Dispossess Michael Murphy. And so far, and it is early days, but the opening 43 minutes just haven't gone the way of Michael Murphy. And he, he is showing he is actually human. He is, and he obviously gets targeted by the best defenders, but he looks tired out there today. Conor McManus does it drift in. It does. Well, the minute that left his foot, I was almost going to say it was wide. Thought I would hold off for a couple of seconds. Very glad I did, and they just curled in beautifully. You haven't hit enough free kicks, Thomas. I knew <laughs> that was going straight over, and, and Conor McManus actually just stood there and admired it going over. He had the best view in the house, and he would have been practising them all, all season long, and he's delivering today. That was a majestic score. Dick Clark and Drew Wiley sitting there, prime for action if called upon. Monaghan are four points ahead. Here comes Ryan McHugh. McHugh forced to go backwards, does well to secure possession and maintain it. McNeely should run into a cul-de-sac, a blue and white cul-de-sac, but it does well to again keep ball. It's a very poor pass, taken well by Neil Gallagher. Frank McGlynn now coming forward. They need a little bit of magic from McGlynn. McGlynn shot is high. Does it have the direction? Does it have the accuracy? No. Wide. And so far, it's just not Donegal's day. It isn't. The little breaks aren't going their way, but they really have changed their urgency in this second half. They realise what's at stake here. They, they want to win this Ulster Championship, and 
you know, while they've been all lucky with a few shots, they've just drifted wide. They really are urgent. I've seen when they, uh, we've seen when they won the sideline ball earlier in the second half, and it just started. There's three or four boys bustling to get it. They want they, their times now, and they're going to try and make their charge now, and they'll be looking to convert more to get back on the scoreboard a bit closer. Kieran Duffy did ever so well to get rid of that ball. He gave it to Fintan Kelly, who in turn has given it to Desi Moore. Now, 50-50 ball, who will go for it? Conor McManus tries to go. That's great defending from Neil McGee. Was really under pressure, was behind the man, and did ever so well to get that. Neil McGee down on the ground, back on his feet. Donegal have possession, Colin McFadden, he's a long way from goal. Paddy McBurdy is playing up there by himself. McFadden moving forward, trying to take on this Monaghan defence almost by himself. Has done a great job so far. Thought about the shot, this would be a beautiful score, but it was over, it doesn't. Goes to the left and it goes wide. And Donegal, when they move forward, <laughs> don't see what have the options. We see another substitution coming on. Ryan McInesby makes his way into battle. A very useful player. And very influential. He replaces Owen Duffy. Ball kicked out high into the middle of the field. Neil Gallagher rises highest. Secures possession and Donegal build again. Ryan McHugh. Maybe he's the key to unlock this modern defence. He certainly seems to be the go to man during the second half. Frank McGlynn. Still going, gives it off to Neil Gallagher. Donegal need a score. Gallagher is unable to provide it. Another wide for Donegal. And that is their 10th in total, twice the number of Monaghan, 10 wides to 5. And unbelievably, that's their 6th wide in the second half. Yeah, and most of those opportunities weren't under any great pressure. Um, they clear shot at the post, no block coming in, no, they're not even kicking over hands. And you just get the feeling that these missed opportunities are, are going to just make Donegal miss out in this angle of cell. It seems to be Monaghan's day so far. But Rory Began is down on the ground, the Monaghan goalkeeper receiving some treatment. And Cian Mohan looks as if he's perhaps going to get warmed up. There's Stephen Golligley switching over the bib. And this would be a blow to Monaghan should their goalkeeper have to come off. He's six foot three, the Scotstown club man. He hits 45s for Monaghan if it happens. And he looks to be having a little bit of problem with that quad. And that is big trouble for a goalkeeper because of the kickouts. Exactly, that's a very important muscle, especially with his booming leg as well. He, he can kick the ball 70, 80 metres. So it is, the break has come at a good time for Monaghan. Hopefully their goalkeeper is going to be OK. But Donegal have been on top the last few minutes. So this break in the play can break Donegal's momentum. Monaghan will just get their breath back and focus again. I see a few um, instructions coming from the sideline from both teams. So Smile, you're on television. It's been strapped up, and we'll have a look at it again. Here's the kick out from Rory Began. Hits it with the right foot. And just at the very edge, seems to just jump a little bit. He obviously tweaked it, kicking that ball out, and he kicks the ball with his right foot predominantly, Rory Began. And I'm wondering if get a good ball. It's all about kick outs, and if he's only meant to do that, he's got to come off. He has to come off if he's not fit, so it's up to him to see how he feels, be honest with the medical staff. And they're trying their very best to keep him out there. He's such an important card to his side, so they might give him another couple of minutes. The cynical side in me would maybe say Donegal were basically getting back on their feet. They're doing predominantly well there. And all of a sudden, maybe it's in the armory. If it's going that way, goalkeeper go down and take a little bit of a rest. That's no one. Is that me I, maybe being very Maybe, very maybe you are, but whatever way. You know, it's, it's us being professional, working out where the game's at, what your team needs to do, playing within the rules, but trying, trying your, your best way to bend them if you can. And we'll, we'll just see how it hold it, Donegal's momentum, and hopefully he can continue. It's all part of modern-day Gaelic football. 50 minutes gone, 20 remaining. It's Monon who have the advantage. They lead by four points. Here comes Frank McGlynn as he fouled on the attack. Referee says no, forced to go backwards. Great dummy from Colin McFadden. And he just loses possession. McInesby steals it. McFadden is down in the ground, but 
Monaghan break, they've lost possession, they win it back again. Great play from Ryan Wiley. Wiley hits it in high. Donegal defenders miss it now, Conor McManus, can he get it? Bends down, scoops it up, tries to take on Neil McGee and Paddy McGrath. Turns, shoots, doesn't even look at goals, Conor McManus. Well, he wants his hands on that championship trophy. He's already looking odds on for man of the match at this stage. That's his sixth score. And he didn't even look where the goals were at. He just instinctively knew. You're an utter class, Thomas. Uh, that was a very difficult ball to win. He had a go, pick it up. He turned a couple of defenders and just swung it over beautifully, close to where he had his free kick. But there's not very many players in Ireland who do that. And he is having an absolute stormer today. And you can see what it means to him. It's just so nice to watch, and his finishing has been top class. He is a sublime footballer, he really is. And he's hit six points today, five points the margin between the sides. You could argue very definitely that he has been the difference between the teams today. So far, there's 20 minutes remaining. Donegal, snap up possession. Paddy McBrearty tries to play in Oren McNeilish. McNeilish moving forward and now seeps into the Monaghan half. The play has been switched. Martin McElhinney. And with 20 minutes remaining, Martin Clark, you do get the sense if Donegal are going to get back into this game, they're probably going to have to get a goal. The boys called it at halftime. Absolutely. Monaghan have protected their... You know, goals so staunchy so far in the, in the Ulster Championship. Cavan failed to get a goal, Fermanagh failed to get a goal, and now we're halfway through the second half, and Donegal have yet to get a goal or any real goal opportunity. So, you know, I can't see Donegal getting a goal at this stage, but they certainly need one. Well, your brother John Clark, who of course formerly played for Down, fancied Monon to win. Peter Canavan fancied Monon to win. And even Kevin Cassidy, the former Donegal player, said perhaps Donegal have larger aspirations than maybe just the Ulster Championship this year. On that note, he maybe thinks Monaghan might win it today. And so far, that's proven to be the case, but lots of time to go. And lots of time for this man to make an impression. It wasn't until 57 minutes gone against Tyrone where he scored his first point. That's his second of the day. It reduced the deficit to four. Fantastic score from Murphy. Um when I was watching Gaelic football with my Australian rules mates, they loved the fact that the best kickers in the team could take the free kicks, where it's if you win the free kick over there, you have to take the free yourself. But with where you can have your place kickers over here, it's fantastic to watch them all day long with Manus and Murphy. Well, that was dangerous in defence from Monaghan, and Colin McFadden has been taken off. And when you see that old established guard of Carl Lacey and Colin McFadden being taken off, it's not something we're familiar with. Monaghan on the attack, still going forward. This is wonderful play for Monaghan. It's Carl O'Connell, great tackle. And beautiful goalkeeping under pressure. Didn't even bend for it. Just scooped it up with his foot. Well, confident defender from Donegal, but that was really a goal opportunity for just a split second for Monaghan. Donegal have possession, however. Martin McElhenney. Donegal need another score. They trail by four points. Paddy McBrearty, he's a long way from goal. Ryan McHugh. Neil Gallagher has found Paddy McBrearty. McBrearty trying to take on this modern defence. That's great play from McBrearty. Goes for the shot, does it go in? It doesn't. It goes to the left and it goes wide. Here's the goal chance again. Carl O'Connell still going and look about that for a tackle. Frank McGlynn <laughs> under pressure. Paul Durkin. Didn't even bend for it, just scooped it up with his foot. Fantastic skill, that tackle from Frank McGlynn. The and it had to be perfect. It did, and the game's moving so fast. That's happening at full-on sprint, and Carl O'Connell's so fast. To be able to time that so cleanly, it was magnificent. Well, they were worried about the injury to Paddy McBrady coming into today's game. There's the shot. He lands down, he lands down awkwardly. <laughs> on the left leg, and he's holding <laughs> his <laughs> left knee. <laughs> Stephen Golligley comes in. Taken off is Dermot Malone. And it has to be said, Monaghan this year throughout the championship, their bench has provided nine points in two championship games. It illustrates just how strong a squad they have. Fantastic squad and a fantastic team ethos within the squad. No one's you know unhappy if they're not starting. They know what role they have to play if they come on and they pulled away from Fermanagh because of the introduction of four or five key subs and 
you know, we, we've seen recently what Fermanagh have done as well, so maybe that win had a lot more significance than people thought. McInespy down this right-hand side, lovely toe tap, goes for the shot outside of the right boot. It goes too much to the left and it goes wide. So, substitute Ryan McInespy hoping to get his name on the score sheet. Hasn't worked out so far, and it, it's extremely warm down on Clonus. And people maybe watching back at home wouldn't be aware of that. Whenever the sun comes out, it's like a cauldron of heat down there. Totally is, and players are taking water on board every opportunity they can. They're so well educated now, modern players are getting their sports drinks and their different drinks on board, and you can see that they're just screaming out for water any chance they can get. Neil McGee trying to play through. Uh, it's just a little bit too far for substitute Darrell Connor. Well, he was introduced just a few moments ago. Darrell Connor, of course, his father John played for Ross Common back in the 1980 All Ireland final. Won many Connacht championships, played in four finals in a row. And here's a man we thought we wouldn't see in 2015, Liam McLoon. Only joined the panel a couple of weeks ago and looks as if his arrival in Championship 2015 is just moments away. Monaghan on the attack. They lead by four points with 15 minutes remaining. Golagly is in no hurry to move forward. Kieran Hughes bounced it through his legs. I remember seeing Joe Cassidy do that way back in 1985. Benny Corey puts the head down and goes. Taking on Anthony Thompson. Does well to find his man. Pushed Meganespi. Paddy McGrath did. And the engineer who lives in Dublin concedes the free. And scorable territory for Conor McManus. Here we look at it again. Finds Mac and SP. Yeah, and you can see the, the Monaghan guy signaling them to slow the, slow the play down. We're four points up against Donegal here. They don't need to rush. The, the slower the game goes from here for, for Monaghan, the better. Donegal need to be urgent. They need to try and get the ball back. They can't be conceding free kicks down here because with no Conor McManus, he'll take his time. And the way he's playing today, you wouldn't bet, him, bet against him scoring this, even though he's right over in the sideline. Well, people will talk about Conor McManus. He is the man getting the scores, but somebody who perhaps won't be mentioned as much has been Benny Corey. He stifled Michael Murphy any time he's moved forward, and certainly when on the ball, he's been creative, and everything has sort of sprung from him. Very influential today, the Clinturbert club man. This is his Clinturbert teammate, Conor McManus. Is it over? It is not. It goes to the left when it goes right. He's a human being. So a goal kick for Donegal, 7 points to 11, 4 points between the sides, 13 minutes to go. Taken very short into the hands of Mark McHugh. McHugh does well to evade the block. Frank McGlynn coming down his right hand side. McGlynn, Anthony Thompson's in front of him, if he can spot him. McGlynn still going. Moves in field, gives it to Paddy McBerty, who shoots from the 45 meter line, dead on, very central. It's a long way out. Comes to the right, and it goes wide. Another wide for Donegal. It's their 13th in total. Malika Rourke's side on the attack, given to Kieran Hughes, does well to get out in front of his man. Let's it go, does he keep it in play? He's unable to do so. Sideline ball for Donegal. What do Donegal have to do, Martin Clark, in your opinion? They just have to, once they're playing that ball forward, they just need to get into support as well. Just try and support forward. I know their legs are going to be getting tired now. Need to try a few longer balls in and then get in around to support. Because the long range shooting has not been going well for them so far and that they are in danger of kicking themselves out of it. And, a lot of these shots are come from 45, 50 metres out under pressure, and that's not working for them. They need to try and get it in closer to the goal and then get bodies around to support. Get, it's obviously easier to score from 20, 30 metres and those long bombs that have not worked for them today. So Monaghan will be delighted to protect that danger area really, really well. They did it, obviously, against Fermanagh as well, where we watched that. They're really beating Donegal at their own game at the minute. We're moving into the final ten. Four points between the sides. Donegal need something. Here comes Ryan McHugh. Finds Oran McNeilish. Thompson does well to drive his way out of a Monaghan brick wall. Legally so. 
frustration for Donegal. Monaghan come away with it. Here comes that man, Benny Corey, once again. Corey still going, moving down this left-hand side and takes on Michael Murphy, one-on-one. -on -one. Corey plays through, Neil McAdam, it's all opened up for Monaghan. Desi Moen takes it the second time of asking, goes for the shot with the left foot, and it goes to the right, and it goes wide. Rory Gallagher, furious. Well, there's Neil McAdam again, and again on the straight spinny, Corey, the influence he's had during this game, and Desi Moen, well, he dropped it, did well to maintain possession the second time of asking, but just snatched the shot. Donegal haven't scored a point from play since Frank McGlynn's score in the fifth minute. It tells its own story. Incredible statistic, and they've had the chances. They're shooting but certainly weren't with them today. Donegal on the attack. They still need a score. There's still time in Darrell's hammer still going through. Going through Shirley Fowle. Referee eventually says yes. Well, a combination of perhaps two fouls, but just for a split second, it all opened up. Here we have a look at it again, Martin Clark. Yeah, he considered having the shot from further out, but he probably realised they haven't been having much success, so he decided to run it in. And this is where their scores have been coming from in the second half. Running at the Monaghan defence and winning free kicks for Paddy McBurdy or Michael Murphy to put over. Very incisive run there. And again, it's that tackle from behind. It's so difficult to execute. Well, Darrow Connor, his father was called Jigger because of those dancing feet. It's obviously something in the jeans. Paddy McBrarty. Well, he hit a free just moments ago. It's it 13 metres out. No real question of somebody with the calibre of Paddy McBrarty missing that one. The umpire waves his flag. And all of a sudden, for all the dominance Monaghan have had, there's just a kick of the ball between the sides. Yep, and just to note off camera, the Donegal team have squeezed right up the ground. Monaghan have been hitting a number of short kickouts this half and walking the ball right up into their scoring zone. Donegal, the management have got the, the word out, squeeze up, we're going to play the ball in more, and Donegal, Rory Began has to kick a long kick. High ball, Owen Lennon and Neil Gallagher going for a two beasts of the game. Neil Gallagher wins that one. Paddy McBrarty switches the play to Frank McGlynn, and all of a sudden there's a little bit of momentum shifting in this game towards the men from Donegal. They have possession the right side the 45 metre line, it's Ryan McHugh. Trying to take on Darren Hughes, Ryan McHugh, so evasive. But loses possession right at the very end. Ryan Wiley. Finds Carl O'Connell. Carl O'Connell moving forward and has found Golligley. The substitute crosses the 45 metre line. Tackled, maintains possession, tries to find McAdam. Ambitious pass, Donegal come away with it. Now it's turning the blanket defence into an accurate and direct counter-attack. That's the question being asked of Donegal. Can they do it now? With three points behind. Mark McHugh. Route one football. Michael Murphy's at the edge of the square. In it goes. Murphy does well to win it. Gets it. Offloads the pass. Donegal could do with a score. The shot on the turn. <laughs> All stewards and guardy to end of match positions. All stewards and guardy to end of match positions. So two balls on the field. And eventually it's taken by Rory Began. And when the PA announcement goes out, match stewards take end of match positions and with three points behind it's time for panic stations. Definitely, they have changed their tactics with he just that high ball in the Murphy. He did brilliantly to protect the drop zone and catch it. Although he was unable to keep his feet and he had a rush to pass out. But I'd say we'll be seeing a few more of those passes before the, this match is over. And if Murphy can win one, they need the support in around him and one goal and this is a draw game. Kieran Duffy takes the return pass. Still going in the top left-hand corner of your screen. You can see a Donegal defender down with cramp. Such is the intensity out there, illustrated by that tackle and that interception. Donegal come away with it. This game is not over. Six minutes to go. Ryan McHugh trying to take on Darren Hughes again down that left-hand side. Decides to go backwards this time. Anthony Thompson.
In comes the shot. Over goes the score. Well, what about that for a team under pressure? Just two points between the sides. What a score that was. Absolutely phenomenal. It's very difficult to explain. There's the turnover we see further up the field, but it's very difficult to explain how good this kick was. He just let right into it. Had the kick over hands as well. And he has missed a few of those, but again, that mental strength, backing himself in. It's a wonderful score that never looked like missing. Rory Began has put on the cap, such as the strength of the sunshine in this second half. Paddy McBurvey's point has left just two points between the sides. And Monaghan, dare I say it, have gone to sleep. Donegal are on the rampage. Here they come, Mark McHugh shows the dummy, goes down, referee gives the free. Well, three scores in a row for Donegal. Mark McHugh, well, you could say that he wanted it, but technically when the arm's out, you yep. get it. Yeah, it's there, and again, running at that lovely sidestep that he has that both McHugh boys Wrong foot to defender, and you have to fight or else it's through and goal. So, McBurdy puts this one over unbelievably. There's only one point in it. Well, this is a difficult kick. Paddy McBurdy's confidence will be high after that point afterwards, but this is pressure, and he's still a very young man. But Paddy McBurdy, he doesn't do pressure. Just the point between the sides, and Paddy McBurdy is a man that's coming into form at the right time. That's his sixth point this afternoon. Fantastic. He's done at one end, Conor McManus the other, but. It just shows you the mental state of Donegal. They are never beaten. They plan for this, and it's going to be an unbelievable final four or five minutes. Monaghan on the attack, and they find Owen Lennon. That's a lovely ball in towards Conor McManus, who turns his man even before he's grabbed possession. McManus, Monaghan need to score as McManus, the man to provide it off the post, and very well gathered that time by Eamon McGee. Well, Eamon McGee has been relatively quiet from the point of view. He hasn't seen much of the ball. He's kept Kieran Hughes relatively quiet, so he's doing his job. But, boy, did he earn his corn during that one, because that could easily have trickled into the back of the net. Monaghan snaps possession back again. Conor McManus steals it from Desi Moan, his own teammate. In goes the pass. It's not accurate enough. Neil McGee takes it under pressure, and Donegal come away with it. Mark McHugh down this right-hand side. What a finish we're having to this Ulster Championship final. Just a single kick of the ball. Just a single point separating these sides. The anglo Cell trophy. Both Donegal and Monaghan want their hands on it. They want that buy straight into the quarter-final on Bank Holiday weekend in August. The loser are out next weekend and have the final round of the qualifiers. You don't want to be in it. Here comes Frank McGlynn moving forward. Still coming forward. McGlynn thought about it on the left foot instead gives it to one of the shooters Dar O'Connor pulls it back in comes the shot from distance it doesn't have the legs but it's going to drop drop into the square referee says it's a free out two and a half minutes to go but well, what a climax we're having to the Ulster Championship season Benny Corey tackled by McNeilish the referee says it's a free And Owen Lennon is going to be taken off and coming into the fray very shortly will be Dick Clerk, and that young man can't even look. He's saying his prayers. Dick Clerk, he's getting ready. Such an influence he's had from the bench. But Monaghan are on the attack. Maybe they won't need him. Carl O'Connell tries to pick it up under so much pressure. He's unable to do it. He gets ball in hand. Mark McHugh, it's all gone very scrappy. Who's going to break first? Will it be Donegal? Will it be Monaghan? It's the Connell man who have possession. McElhinney. No options to the right, no options up front. He's forced to go backwards and switch wings. Ryan McHugh takes the pass from his brother Mark. McHugh taking on Connor McManus. He's back defending. And here comes McNeilish. And this game now really at boiling point. One minute of normal time remaining. Donegal need to manufacture a score. Thompson, the pass was this. And the tackle was illegal. Monaghan win the free. Is that the chance gone? 
when it's two for Hannah Manager managing these sides today. Rory Gallagher played for Fermanagh as a 17-year-old, made his championship debut down in Galway as a 17-year-old child, should we say it. And Manic Rowe was his teammate that day. Both of them going head to head today. And the Donegal supporters will perhaps be just as nervous as those players on the field. It's going to be a free for Monaghan once the play continues. The clock is ticking down, Martin Clark. This will suit Monaghan. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Dick Curtin got on the ball immediately just to settle that thing. You just feel a real sense of calm when he's on the pitch. All the players look up to him so much. He's been such a servant. But this break in the play again suits Monaghan. If they can keep the ball, they will win the angle out. The equation is simple. Don't give the ball away and you're Ulster champions. It's easier said than done. So Vinnie Corey has been a towering influential figure this afternoon. The free is taken short, unsurprisingly. Stephen Golligley will probably go backwards, he does. Kieran Duffy, he might even go backwards. He does. Ryan Wiley moving forward and passes it to one of his teammates outside. Here comes Carl O'Connell. He's found Dick Clerken. Clerken's dropped it. For his first touch, he needs to get up to speed right away. Does well to shield off the Donegal attack, the Donegal pressure. Carl O'Connell takes the return pass. He may give it back to Dick Clerken. He does. Clerken surely fouled. Goes off his feet. Then Dick Clerken knows every trick in the book. He'll take his time getting up. He was involved twice in that chain of possessions. Just wanted to keep the ball, draw the man, open up the play. Monaghan played that from the free kick that they won perfectly. Five, six, seven passes. He's taking another two minutes off the clock. And as you say, Dick Clerken's a strong man. He probably didn't need to go to ground like that, but it wastes yet more time. Get mixed on the goal, frustrated. Look, there we see him hold it. It probably was a free kick, but he certainly milked it. For the all experience of drew in the tackle, and Dick Clerken did exactly the same thing in the semi-final or the game against Cavan in the quarterfinal. They were under pressure, and it was a free. And he, the man going forward, he said, "No, absolutely no way. Just kick the ball 20 yards back." Monham in team possession, and Monham won that game by the narrowest of margins. So that little bit of experience. And remember, Dick Clerken has played longer in inter-county football than any other player ever in the modern game. So Rory Began. Well, this will test his quad muscle. This man can't look. Rory Began, the goalkeeper, his first attempt on goal, kicks it. It goes to the left and it goes wide. 72 minutes. We have three minutes of added time. Two of them have been played, 15 seconds. We've probably time for one more play. Paul Finley's substitution looks imminent. This is it for Donegal. If they're going to keep their hands on this anglo cell trophy, they must conjure a score from somewhere, somehow. Paddy McBurdy. Has the ball, gives it to Mark McHugh. McHugh goes one way, goes another. He finds the roadblock that is Dick Clerken. Frank McGlynn, Monaghan have everybody inside their own half. Every single player. Possession is stolen, but goes all the way back to Paddy McGrath. McGrath now coming down this left hand side. Tries to find McLean, takes the return pass. McGrath still going. Tries to give it to Anthony Thompson. Has found E. Gallagher. Is he the man to get the equaliser score? Gallagher takes a bounce, pulls it back. McBrady from distance outside the D. Does it go over? It does. It doesn't. It doesn't. When the Donegal supporters thought it was over, Paddy McBrady thought it was over. The umpires looked at it, but eventually. They took their time, but they waved it wide. We played the three minutes about a time. Here we have a look at it again. No Hawkeye and Clonus. In comes the shot. Difficult to say from that angle, but that body language really says it all. Martin McElhenney. The ball is kicked out, and Monaghan are the Ulster football champions for 2015. That's how much Ulster football means, and that is how much the Angus Cell Trophy means to Monaghan Award and his management team and the players of Monaghan. And an incredible game, Rory Gallagher and Monaghan Award, former teammates for Monaghan, rivals today, but the best of friends off the pitch.
And there we have it. Try your best to keep the Monarch supporters off the field. It's not going to work today. Donegal have come. They have lost by a single point. They tried their very best during the second half. But it's Monaghan who have won the Ulster Championship for 2015. And they've won it by a single point. Yeah. They probably got a bit nervous when they had that lead in Donegal, the machine they are, they kept coming and, you know, fair play to Monaghan, they're Ulster champions now, but I think we haven't seen the last of either of these teams come the All-Ireland series. Great preparation for the All-Ireland quarterfinals for Donegal, for Monaghan, should I say, of course. Donegal will have to go into the qualifiers, they will have to play next weekend. Look at those scenes in Clunas, absolutely sensational. Absolutely brilliant to see the kids running on the field, embracing their heroes after they've, they've been in battle against one of the best teams in Ireland there. It's, it's just unbelievable to see the atmosphere of the whole day. Monaghan will take a lot out of this victory. Well, it's a special day for Monaghan. It's a special day in Ulster football. And Monaghan wanted that Ulster championship. Well, they've got it. They are the Ulster senior football champions. And such splendid scenes here on the hollow turf of Clunas. And it's just really a special special day no question about that there is the flag that will rise highest tonight they are the champions and they've overcome the Donegal challenge for the Chicago men they will go in to the qualifiers they will be out next weekend but for today the day belongs to Monaghan they belong to Monaghan and we knew. were they the better team in your opinion Martin Clark it's hard to say they played in patches Conor McManus's finishing was probably the difference in the end Donegal kicked unbelievable number of wides in the second half some of them under pressure some not but I think on the balance of the play that we knew the game was going to be so even and it came down to a couple of inches with the last kick of the game. Could have been a draw. Monaghan won by a point. So. Well, Monaghan are Ulster champions. They've won the Ulster Championship. Donegal, 10 points. Monaghan, 11. Let's go live to pitch side to Thomas Keane, who's with Malachy O'Rourke. Fantastic scenes down here. Malachy, first of all, describe that finish. Ah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was tough on the heart there at the end. But uh, I think our hunger for it probably shone through. You know, and we won this two years ago, and, and in fairness, I didn't feel the players got the credit for it. That performance, a lot of it at that stage was about Donegal, and Donegal were tired, Donegal had injuries, one thing or another. Hey, we did, we did, Donegal won a fair and square last year, we took on the gin. We were just determined to come back this year and give it our best shot. Delayed for the boys to put in massive effort. Delayed they got the rewards again today. What was the key to today's victory? Well, I think, you know, playing against Donegal, you have to have a lot of patience, you have to set up well. Uh, it can be a sort of a cat and mouse game at times, but you have to stick with it. As well as that, I think the hunger, the boys torn the ball over and just refused to give in, you know. I know it's going to be a tough battle, but I think our hunger maybe in the end up got us over the line. Just stay with us for one more second, but Darren Hughes, two out of three ain't bad. It's all right now. I um, suppose we felt we, we didn't do ourselves justice last year, so we didn't. And, uh, it was all about performance here today. We didn't get the credit we deserved for, for 20 I'll tell you what, this boy here. He's not bad, is he? He's not bad. He's not bad. Um, nah, here. We knew we were going to be up against it at times. It clashed on through them couple of scores near the end. But yeah, we knew we were good enough. We didn't get the credit we deserved in 2013. We didn't put the performance in we should have last year. And we just needed to come back fighting to show the people that we were good enough this year. Connor, you're about to go up and lift that cup. How does this compare it two years ago? And did you feel you have something to prove? Because Darren spoke about it, Malachy spoke about it. You've won two officers out of three. That wasn't a fluke two years ago. No, definitely not. I suppose, as Darren says, we didn't get maybe the credit we deserved. Um, we got to another us the final last year. Fairly flat performance, but I think we showed we showed our will to win there today. Nothing was going to stop us. Go and lift that cup. Darren, if you stay with us for one more second. Connor's away up the steps, sir. I know you want to see over these moments. What does it mean to the fans? And also, talk about this squad, because it wasn't about 15 players. It wasn't about Connor McManus sticking the ball over the bar. It was about the players making an impact off the bench as well. Yeah, we knew that from, from the start of the year. We were back in October, November, over Christmas, New Year's. Own Lennon there from October, he was fighting, getting back with injury, never seen any league football. They don't get married this week. They're married on Friday, so not a bad weekend for him. So it's not so... Uh, they are, uh, we knew we had the squad, the Spies didn't make the 26th today, they were walking any other team. And it was just all about performance today and thankfully we got it there. It's absolutely pandemonium down here, Mark. Fantastic scenes. And as Darren said, it hasn't even started yet. I'm going to let you go and take part in our presentation and uh, go back to the lads in the studio and digest what was a pulsating Ulster final.
Well, thank you very much uh, to uh, Thomas Cain. Uh, that's uh, Martin McAvenny, a proud Monaghan man, the Ulster president, in shot. And that is, I imagine, the future. What for the future for this Monaghan team? Can they go on? Can they push on? Can they make their mark in Croke Park? And uh, Oshin Martin and Philip with me in studio as Martin McAvenny prepares to hand over the silverware. Guys, a, a very, very quick word, Oshin. Did the better side win? Well, the better team always wins, Mark. I mean, Donegal had lots of chances uh, uh, in the second half, but look at Monaghan and see that man lifting the cup, Mark. Deserves so much credit for what he done today. He was patient and kicked the scores when he needed to. Actually, he hit the post towards the end of the game and I thought that might have cost him, but Monaghan were clinging on and clinging on, but they just did enough and they deserve all the credit today because it's a fabulous... I suppose if, when, when Malik Rock talks about this team, he talks about getting the best out of them, <laughs> and he certainly got the best out of them so it's far. It's too much to bear for those <laughs> tender little Donegal ears. Uh, Porrick Duffy, the Director General of the GA, and shot just to the left of uh, Martin McAvenny, Aegon Farrell, the Uchtron common Lucas Gale, just in behind in the tie. Let's hand you to uh, our match commentator, Thomas Niblick, for the presentation. Well, Conor McManus, the contemporary man, six points today, three points from play, three from freeze. He illustrates what a Gaelic footballer is all about. An icon of the game, he has his hands on the anglo Celt Monaghan, our champions of Ulster for 2015. Congratulations to the Farney County. Colin Walsh, coming back from a cruciate injury, gets his hands on it as well. And in the middle is the younger sister of Paul Finlay, giving her round of applause. Congratulations to Monaghan. Martin Clark, sum it up. Well, that man holding holding the cup, he he had every part of it. He was Martin. Remember Neil McGee today, one of the best defenders. So I'll just hear him speak. Here is the words of Conor McManus. First of all, I want to thank these good lads beside me here. To a man, one to thirty-six or seven players on this panel. After last year, the disappointment of last year, every man put his shoulder to the wheel. And I can't thank these boys enough for the dedication, effort and commitment they have shown this last 12 months to get Monaghan and the Monaghan people back up these steps. Secondly, I want to thank Donegal for a tough, hard sporting game. Um, last year in the, in the final, you know, they showed us, they gave us a lesson on how to play football. And in fairness to them, they went the whole way to All-Ireland and were within a kick of the ball of winning it. So I want to congratulate Donegal on their performance today and wish them all the best in the qualifiers. <laughs> now I want to move on to the backroom team. The, the, the effort by these people is just, is just unbelievable. We're going since, since early, early November of last year to get ready for today. Um, it doesn't happen without a massive amount of work to our physios, Owen, Jared, and, Lo and uh, Emma. I want to thank them very much for all their efforts and getting everybody in peak condition for today. To Francie, our team man, Patricia, our nutritionist as well, she's been a massive effort for this. And I would, I would well believe in the last five, ten minutes, his whole work um, and, and, and annoying us and nagging us, we got us over the line. So thank you, Tricia, and also Francis McGinty. <laughs> Secondly, I want to thank the, the officials, David Coldrick and his team of officials today. I think they've done a fantastic job. Well, well those are the words of Conor McManus, and there are the splendid scenes at Clonus. And we'll have a look at it again. Martin Michael. McAvenny, the president of the Ulster Council, a Monaghan man presenting the trophy to another Monaghan man. Conor McManus, he looks a very happy, happy boy, and I've no doubt they will party in Monaghan tonight. Congratulations to Monaghan. They are the best that Ulster has offered in 2015, and the Monaghan supporters, well, almost all the Monaghan supporters, are very happy indeed. Let's go back to the studio, to all the boys and Monaghan.
Thank you very much to Martin Clark. Thank you very much to uh, Thomas Niblock. We will hear more and on from uh, Thomas Kane for the record. That is a sixth. Tenth title for Monaghan. They now go second and the roll of order behind uh, Oh Kevin, who have 37 way out there on their own Toronto or third on uh, 13. Uh, and Oshin, we make it that uh, Donegal, obviously now into the qualifiers, cannot play Tyrone, who they met in the first round of us. So that will be Donegal, we reckon, against Galway in the qualifiers. The only proviso of that is that Mayo beat Slego today. If, uh, if Slego were to beat Mayo, then it'd be an open draw again, and they would have the possibility of playing Tyrone because both Mayo and Galway have played each other. Simple, <laughs> simple when you know how, but it, it, it should work out that if Mayo win today, that, that Donegal will play Galway in two weeks. Martin, before we take a more forensic look at things in terms of analysis, is it too simplistic to suggest that Donegal kicked themselves out of it this afternoon because it was an awful lot of noise, especially in that second half? Yeah, well, first of all, congratulations to Mullen. It's great performance by Mullen, considering I think they're the fourth smallest county in population in Ireland. So you have to give them credit. That's two Ulsters they've won now in three years, and they're, they're there knocking the road playing in Division 1. Actually, well done to Mullen. They showed, you know, the difference was they got their scores from maybe less possession in the second half. Donegal, Donegal, lost this game in the second half of the first half and then in the whole second half when they were you know they allowed Monon to come on to them at that stage in the first half and Monon got them good scores kick great scores in the second half only got in most of the possession but took the wrong option kicked wrong wides but you'd expect at the end they got the ball to the right man and you expect him to kick it over the bar but you know put up a big performance in the second half if they'd a push up what they'll be saying now don't all people be saying tonight if we'd a push up from the start of the game We'd have probably won the game, but listen, this decision has made and has easy been ways afterwards. Folks. I guess you did tip Monaghan, and uh... <laughs> I rate the Monaghan team highly, Mark. I've always said that about them, and I mean that today they'll they'll improve from that game today because that's a real tactical battle. When they when they go on to the quarter final now, it'll be it'll be a different it'll be a different different match, and look, at this Monaghan team will take a bit of beating. Philip, I would suggest to you that it wouldn't surprise, I guess, a lot of Gaelic football fans if Donegal were to push on and go further in this year's championship than Monaghan. Monaghan's big qu question, Mark, is being able to do it now in All-Ireland quarter or potentially semi-final. How do they get there? How do they get over that psychological hurdle? I think this team's a wee bit different. I think two years ago, Monaghan, Ulster final was everything for Monaghan. And only against her own, basically, I thought they were wide open to be taken that day. And losing last year, obviously a big blow, losing the Ulster final, and then obviously get the, the bum draw off the dubs. But I think this year their, their targets are a bit different. I think a semi-final is a realistic target for Monaghan, and I've no doubt that they want a quarter-final victory. And we're seeing today, this is a big psychological win for them. They were hanging on in that second half, and that was a wee bit of fear behind them as well. Were they good enough to beat this Donegal team who were in the final last year? They just, just about got across the line, but that mentally will have a huge impact on them. And I've no doubt going into a quarter-final, they will think, they have a real chance of getting the Lawrence semi-final, which will be great progress for Monaghan. She most certainly will. It's uh, that kind of day, and uh, while we're at it, congratulations to all in Monaghan, not least Big Owen Lennon, who of course got married. Philip, uh, if we talk tactics, and Oshin had uh, mentioned during halftime, he hated using the word hunger, but they showed a ravenous intensity at times in terms of their capacity for turnover, Monaghan. Yeah, I don't think you, you can't you can't overplay the hunger of in GA now at the moment. In Gaelic football, it's key to everything. And the last three Ulster finals, I think, have shown that. We've seen the hungrier team two years ago in Monaghan winning. Last year, Donegal were, were clearly the hungry team had a, had a, the record of set straight from the previous year. And Monaghan the day just about had more hunger. But credit to Donegal, I think if you have huge huge credit at half time, they looked as if they were they were gone in the match. And then they kicked three four wides in the opening five minutes of the second half. Monaghan kicked a point, and you'd have thought that, that it had died down, but. This is These, the hunger, this is yeah. the tenacity in the tackling. Fantastic tackling there, especially when you turn over a player's key to Donegal as Michael Murphy. Those were big moments in the game. But the key point was, when you turn them over to scores, then they become game-winning scores, game-winning turnovers. There's not too many people who remember that turnover back in their own half of the pitch. Maybe the, the Fintan Kelly, who's the one that, that caused the turnover. Connor Manus again won, won the free. That was a big moment in the match as well. Out manoeuvring. Uh, and then McGee, lovely and tackle then, there. Really, that's textbook stuff, that's what... People say the tackling's went out of the game as well Fitton because of these blanket defences, but and Conor McManus stepped up and had an absolutely wonderful free. But what Conor McManus done today, I was worried early on, I seen him pulling out into the into the midfield area and I thought that was a step back, a psychological step back from one but once he went inside, to kick three points from play against Neil McGee was, was the game winner at the end of the day. Just park you there because I think uh, Thomas Kane has uh, managed to find another rather jubilant uh, Monaghan player, Thomas. Yes, uh, Owen Lennon and Desi Mullen alongside me. First of all, Owen, tell us about your week. Um, well, first of all, it was a very busy week. Um, 
I just got married there on Friday, but uh, that was a, the best day of my life. But once that passed, I had to focus again on today. And uh, the two things to one weekend has been unbelievable for me. In terms of the scheduling of the wedding, how, how long in advance had you done that? And did you not think that there would be that clash? Well, to be honest, I, I had planned to retire and I got injured last year and I said I'll go back and give her one more go. I wanted to retire maybe playing on the field and uh, it just happened to clash. I booked it two years ago, but uh, listen, we got over the wedding. It was a dry day for me, but we'll, but we'll party now the weekend. I bet you're glad you stayed on. What convinced you to come back this season? Well, listen, the, the, there's a great group of players there, you know, top quality players. It was so disappointing watching the boys losing last year, and I just felt if I could help the thing on any wee bit at all, I'd come back and give them a dig out. And this is sweeter than 2013. Connor, we had a brief chat to you earlier on that you're back having lifted a trophy alongside Desi Moon as well. I met both of you this night last year, and you were devastated. Compare that with now. It's just a difference in day and night, you know. The effort and, and the commitment and talk about it there that these boys have put in to get us and our modern football back up them steps is, is just unbelievable. Um, you know, boys like this man here to be right home then. I forgot to mention in my speech, he was married on Friday and he put everything on hold for, for this here. He's done everything for modern football and for a boy like that to still show that commitment is unbelievable. Desi, the crowd were chanting, we want Sam, we want Sam. Can you take the next step? Well, listen, we're happy. Oh, we're happy. I'm right on cue, you just got soaked. That's all right. No, we're, we're happy. Like There's a famous trophy in your hands. Enough, probably. You can probably never have this enough, but listen, we've put ourselves in that position now. We're in the, we're in the quarter final stages. You know, we wanted to get there at Pine Connolly weekend. We've got there. You know, we'll go back. You know, we'll have, probably enjoy tonight. We'll go back over the next couple of weeks. You know, we know it's the last couple of years we, we've came short. You know, like Dublin last year, thrown the year before. And hopefully now we can go one further. Tell us about Maliki O'Rourke. Just how good is he? Uh, listen, Maliki is uh, his top class, his backroom staff, and him pers personally himself. You know the great rapport with the players, and you know players always respond to the managers and the backroom staff. And you know, the players have shown this. You know they want to, they want to win for Maliki. You know they want to produce performances. I have to remember your fan club there. <laughs> so you know that's that's what that's what we want. The players, the players that stayed on, wanted wanted that, wanted before from Maliki, and we've done that this last couple of years. In terms of the performance today, what was said at halftime? Because you had that blitz in about the 10 minutes before the interval. Yeah, you know, we knew that the way that probably Donegal were setting up, you know, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a hard... They have to come uh, made the All Ireland final last year. You know, well, in fairness to them, it's hard to, you know, continuously do that year on and year out. We probably knew probably their last couple of games were tough coming into it. You know, they played Derry, it was a serious game for them. You know, it's, it's, it's hard energy, high, high intensity work. And we knew we could maybe pick holes. Uh, during, during the match, and lucky enough that we did. You no, know, towards the end of the match, we missed a lot of scores. We we'll probably have to tidy that up. A lot of people expected this to be the Ulster final. In terms of your first two games, did you always feel that there was an extra gear you had if needed? You needed it today. Well, we probably we, like the last two games that we played against Calvin and Fermanagh. They went down the last 60 minutes, 60 fifth minute. You know, and we needed to put the effort in. We probably knew that. But we've done a lot of work since Christmas time and we knew that and we probably knew we had a wee bit in the engine in the tank so we're happy enough. Thank you very much uh, Desi. If the camera just swings around, there is a party only getting started in Monaghan. This is a place to be tonight. Oh, oh, oh. Lost my mind and 